Cherokee 28 uh, Romeo, West Departure is approved, runway 35, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 35, West Departure, 28 Romeo. Approaching runway 35. Entered runway 35, 4,900 feet remaining. Okay, rete rechecking DG on the runway. Looking for 350350 three, set, speed off brakes, and full power. Engine instruments are in the green. Power is available for takeoff. Airspeed indicator is alive. Got wagon 774. Looking for VY at 785. And VY. And off the ground. Scott Wagon 49er Alpha, runway 35, taxi via Bravo 2, then Alpha. Okay, normal climb out at 85 miles per hour on runway heading. At 1000, we'll make our left turn out to the west. Some, uh, a little bit of chop up here. Nothing too serious. And coming up on the thousand. Go with our Skyhawk 1658 Charlie. Left, left turn out. Five ready for departure. Test the 1658 Charlie to Coma Tower. Make a left downwind departure. Runway 35 cleared for takeoff. Runway 35 clear for takeoff off a uh, left downwind departure. 5A Charlie. Uh, it's a beautiful day for flying today. It's a little chilly up here. The airplane likes it. And continue our off climb. Now we're planning on climbing out to 4,500 on our eastbound, westbound heading. And we'll be flying along the west side of Olymp Olympic National Park. Might level off a little bit early here just to avoid some of these lower clouds that I'm seeing just ahead of us. So for now, I think I'm going to level off at 2,000. Evaluate things and climb higher when able. I checked the weather at all the airports between Tacoma Narrows and our destination. Uh, everything's looking great. Let's level off here though at 2,000 and pull power back 2,300. Now we'll trim. Just stay at 2,000 for now. Now we'll lean for that and fuel pump off. Now we'll hold what we have. Yeah, so there's some low clouds here. We're just going to go underneath those. Then it looks really nice, uh, pretty clear just beyond those. I'm going to dip down just a little bit here, pull the power back. Just to stay clear of those clouds. And it looks really good beyond these. Okay, we're almost past these. Now we'll resume our climb. Getting power back in. And there off in the distance is the Olympic Mountains. And you can see the snow caps. Up 65402, top. Around runway 35, taxi via Bravo 4, then Alpha. At Tacoma Tower, citation 360, Tango Delta is uh, visual 35 on our right base. 
Sign Station 360, Tango Delta, Tacoma Tower, make a straight in, runway 35, wind 360 at 5, altimeter 3028, clear to land. Clear land on 35, Tango Delta. All right, I change your mind. I'm going to stay at 2000 for now. There's another layer of clouds up above, or out in front of us there that we're going to want to stay below those. So we're going to hold 2000 for now. Tacoma Tower, Belonka 28112, east to the east. 1,300 would like to transition southeast with hotel. Belonka 28112, Tacoma Tower. Lake Washington traffic, Beaver 598, 10 point southbound. Okay, just switch frequencies from Tacoma Tower over to uh, CTAP. This is a CTAP frequency for multiple airports between here and our destination airport on the, uh, just on the west side of the Olympic National Park. thing I'm not sure is how to pronounce the name of this airport. It looks like Quileute. We'll go with that. Quileute is our destination today. And the pattern altitude there is 1,200. I have the ASOS in standby. 135.225. DTAP frequency 122.9 is in the active. And we're picking a route that's going to kind of keep us away from the mountains there. Just going to come come around the south side of the mountains and then start heading northwest. And we're well above you, I'm tracking you. It looks like a helicopter. Great day for flying. Air temperature right now where we are is uh, 30 degrees. Nice, uh, low-density altitude with the cool air and the higher pressure air over us. Altimeter right now is a 3029er. Another one of those wispy cloud layers we're just going to pass underneath. And it looks like there's another one up ahead of that. Beyond that, I don't see any. It looks like high clouds, 12,000 or better after that second uh, layer of clouds that you can see off in the distance there. Yeah, that's a beautiful sight, those mountains. So today we're going to land at two airports that we haven't been into before, and that's going to be for our Fly Washington Passport program. Camino air traffic, guide lane. One tango, just over top of Camino, simulated engine now, Camino. Okay, we're on our course, this lake is 27 nautical miles. And I set it to a waypoint, let's see, which is called uh, Midlock. And then from that waypoint, I set another waypoint called Wapto. And then from Wapto direct to the airport. All right. Bearing 258. Uh, we're coming to right a little bit here. Zero kilo off as I-5 Green Lake, 1800, landing south number two. Speed over ground is 120, so we have a slight tailwind. There you can see some of those cloud layers kind of laying in there. And that should burn off as the day progresses. I'm steering deliberately left, of course, here. There's our course line. But I'm going to stay a little bit left. I just want to stay to the... just to the left of that mountain range there, that ridge. We could fly over it, but we usually have winds where there are mountains, and if we can stay out of that, we will. Ocean Shores traffic, Cessna 12110, entering the downwind for runway 15, Ocean Shores. There's a guy all the way out at the coast. I know the weather's good out there. I checked uh, weather at Hoquiam, which we're going to be passing just north of. 
outbound. And it's uh, cloud ceilings are 12,000, and that's what I'm expecting once I get kind of past these uh, this little layer of clouds up ahead here. Now we can start climbing up. We should have enough uh, fuel for the round trip, but if we are uncomfortable with our fuel levels when we land, I'm um, going to go ahead and fly into Hopewee. I'm on the return flight. All right. Just going to enrich in the mixture there, looking at the exhaust gas temperature gauge. These are just little wispy clouds here that are burning off as the air warms up and absorbs that moisture out of the air. Not going to get super warm today. Uh, outside air temperature is right now about 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Ocean Shores traffic, that's on 12110, turning final for runway 15, Ocean Shores. Ocean Shores traffic, to the 68 Delta X-ray, 4 miles to the east. I have the winterization plate on the oil cooler just to keep that oil temperature as high as I can get it given the weather conditions. Yeah, we had to troubleshoot a, a fuel leak in the, in the fuel sump. Uh, just all it required was uh, remove the safety wire and tighten the tensioning nut on the uh, sump cylinder. To put a little bit more pressure on the gasket. And I checked it this morning, did that last night, and I checked it this morning, pull the power back a little bit just to stay underneath this little wispy layer here of clouds. Checked it this morning and uh, there was no sign of fuel, so it looks like we're good to go there. I'll recheck it, of course, on the ground when we get down to our destination. A little bit of bumps there with these uh, clouds adjacent to our flight path here. Okay, now we're going to full power and go ahead and climb up. Do a cruise climb at 100 miles per hour. Get a trip for that. Oh, short traffic there. Don't make sure you have to on the fire. There, we're looking at our airspeed indicator. We're trimming for 100 for a cruise climb. Now, there's Sanderson Field. Their uh, DTAP frequency is 122.8. Go ahead and switch over to that. 122.8. Uh, just to see if there's any parachute activity going on over there. Uh, there you can see the airport at our 11 o'clock. Um, there is a uh, parachute outfit base there, and they often do jumps. When they do them, they do them on the north side of the airport, which we're passing by right now. But we want to make sure that we're well clear of that activity, if there is any. Climb to 4,500. Charlie, five miles to the southeast, set up for 45, right downwind for five, Sanderson. And there's a guy coming into Sanderson Field right now. I see him. He's 800 feet below and at our nine o'clock, eight o'clock. Oh, 
Okay, there's 3,000, passing 3,500, looking for 4,500. Yeah, it looks super clear out to the west. There's just a little bit of cloud activity in this area. Alright, Southern 120 Limits, crosswind 34, Alright. I landed there, oh, I don't know, it's been two months ago, and they had the main runway closed, and the taxiway down there, if you can see it, the taxiway just to the right, or just to the north of the runway there, was being used as the runway on that day. Traffic Cessna 9254 Charlie, three miles southeast on a 45 for the right downwind. Coming up on 4,500. Go ahead and level out. And complete our cruise check. Cessna 120 limit downwind, 34, close traffic. All right, leveling off. Power back to 2,300 RPMs. Alrighty. Let it trip. And lean a little bit for the higher altitude. We'll go ahead and turn our landing light off. Now, fuel pump's already off. We're set to the fullest tank. 17 minutes remaining before we switch tanks. There's a nice view of the Olympic Mountains. Traffic Cessna 9254 Charlie, downwind of 05. Right traffic. Okay, level at 4500. Check the altimeter at Sanderson Field. Sanderson traffic, Skyhawk 4358 Romeo is 5 miles to the east. We will be maneuvering for a 45 for the right downwind for runway 5, Sanderson. Alright, a little bit of activity down there. Traffic Cessna 120 Lima, base 34 over. Absolutely gorgeous day. I couldn't resist when I looked at the weather forecast yesterday and then I checked it again this morning. Checked the weather at all points between our departure and destination airports. And everything was showing uh, BFR conditions, 10 mile or better visibility, cloud ceilings 12,000. What's not to like about that? Nice smooth air here. It's a little bumpy as we were uh, passing by some of those low cloud layers. But it's super smooth right now. We'll be doing a full stop, Sanders. Now along the coast, it's a protected wildlife area and you're requested to remain at least 2,000 AGL. So we're going to fly over that area at about 3,000, just along the coastline there. And that's protected area all the way up to our destination airport. Sanderson traffic, Skyhawk 5A Romeo is two miles to the southeast. I'm going to ring for the 45 for the right now, wind runway 5, Sanderson. There you can see some clear-cut areas in that mountain. Those bald spots where they go in and harvest trees and then replant. And then they build roadways just for log extraction. And once they're done, they, the roads stay there. Makes for some good four-wheeling. Here's another look at the Olympic Mountains. That doesn't get any smoother than this. You can't ask for better. Eight to go. 
to our waypoint of Mintlock, and then we're going to turn slightly north and on a north on a northwest heading. A beam midfield for a full stop landing on runway five, Anderson. Yesterday I flew into Bremerton and I, I did post the YouTube video of it. Uh, there were several people in the pattern, maybe four people in the pattern. The guy in front of me did his touch and go and I was on final coming in. I did my touch and go so he was pretty good ways ahead of me. And then I noticed that uh, he was slowing down and wasn't climbing very fast. I continued my climb, I was getting ready to do a right turnout for a eastbound departure to return to Tacoma Arrows and yeah, I, I, I was actually gaining on him so I became a little bit concerned. I continued my climb up to my cruise altitude which was only 2,500 and then the guy did a 180 degree turn to the left. Didn't expect that because we were in a right traffic pattern. He was doing the touch and go so that would have been the normal thing to do. But, but I, was, so I was looking at my ADSB and then I saw this guy do a left turn, a 180 directly toward me uh, I had a thousand feet above him at that point so I wasn't overly concerned and then he announced that he was uh, making an emergency landing on the opposing runway which was runway 20 took off of runway 2 and uh, was making an emergency landing on runway 20 I posted a video of that he made it in okay without issue but that was definitely something different I'm seeing some traffic up ahead, 800 feet above us, and uh, it's heading toward toward the waypoint that we're heading for, uh, Mintlock. Uh, it shouldn't be a factor, but we'll keep an eye out. Now we have 12 minutes left on the uh, left hand. We'll switch over. And four nautical miles to Mintlock. I'm not precisely following my course lines here. I'm more looking out at the terrain and choosing my direction based on what I'm seeing out there. And that traffic should be no factor. He's uh, on almost a 90 degree uh, heading to, to our heading, so he's coming across from left to right. Shouldn't be a factor. Well above us. Oh, we're keeping an eye out for him. Pretty good ways out. He's uh, doing 117 knots on heading uh, 042. He's at 5,175 feet and he's 3.8 nautical miles from us. All that information comes from your ADSB. Pretty amazing stuff. Here I'm just taking a look at our profile or the mountains that are ahead of us. Just to make sure that we have more than enough clearance there. Coming up on Midlock. We're gonna fly over some of these mountains here to the left, the lower elevation mountains. Air traffic is now at our uh, two o'clock. Don't know if we're going to see him. Coming to our three o'clock. And we're just about at Minlock, which is uh, actually a GPS waypoint. Or IFR flight.
tiny bit there, looking at the ECT. There's a nice view of the Olympic Mountains. Those white caps will stay around for some time, all the way into uh, early summer. Makes for a beautiful view from the airport watching the sunset behind the Olympics off to the west. Okay, we're doing 112 over ground showing uh, about 110 indicated. So there's really none. Wind's not really a factor. That would be coming up to a military operations area. Uh, the Olympic. MOA, and that runs from 6,000 to 17,999, so that won't be a factor, we'll be going underneath it, but we could fly through it without approval from the controlling authority, because it's an MOA and not a restricted area, so that won't be a factor for us. There you can see, maybe you can see it. That's our profile of our flight path. Basically, whatever's off the nose. The uh, four flight's looking at that, and it's telling us if we have adequate clearance above the terrain that's in front of us based on our flight path and altitude. So the terrain is not a factor for us. Seven minutes left on the left tank, we'll switch over. We started with 19 gallons on the left, and there's 13 on the right. And I set the timer for 45 minutes. That's about six gallons, so that should bring the left tank down to 13. And then we'll go on the right tank for 30 minutes. That'll bring it down to nine. And then we'll switch back over to the left tank for 30 minutes. Bring that one down to nine. Uh, there's a beautiful lake nestled there between the mountains. Let's see if I get the name of that. It is Winucci Lake. Winucci Lake. It's elevation 800 feet. There's some snow right down there below us. Like a uh, uh, radar station, microwave dish. Right there on the top of that mountain. There's Winucci Lake. We'll be flying right over the top of these mountains that you can see right in front of us. Again, looking at the profile view here on our war flight, and they do not appear to be a factor at all. It would highlight uh, the, them in yellow if we were going to be anywhere close to them on our present heading and altitude, but they're green, solid green. That's always a good sign. Of course, they would be red if that's terrain that you would collide with on your present heading and altitude. So we're basically skirting the Olympic mountain range to the south and then to the west. Our fuel economy should be a little better up here at 4,500 feet since we're leaning the mixture using less fuel. And we're planning on flying the same route on our return flight. I'm only going to record the one way. go 
go ahead and turn on our glide advisor. Always good to have that on. That's going to show us where we would be able to glide based on the airplane performance profile if we were to lose engine power. Not a lot of real hospitable places here in the mountains. Clear cut, maybe, but those aren't a good place to land either because they're full of tree stumps and slash cut. And there certainly are no airports below us. Um, most likely we'd head back toward that lake and uh, try to land in a, a clear cut area. But it wouldn't be fun. It would not be a fun landing. But it's always good to be mindful of what you would do in the event you did have an emergency so you don't get caught short. And we're doing 113 over ground. And bearing to next is uh, 22, it's uh, 272 degrees magnetic. 22 nautical miles. I'm considering, not 100% because it's really expensive equipment, but upgrading the heading indicator to a G5 to a, a digital, a GPS based heading indicator. Still undecided on that, but that would be a nice upgrade. Some people do both the heading indicator and the attitude indicator. You no longer require a uh, vacuum pump in the airplane because if you have no more vacuum instruments in, uh, in that event, you're operating uh, all GPS. So if I were to turn this airplane to the right there, you would see then, if I change to this profile view right here, all of this would turn red. Those mountains are well above our present altitude. Now if you look over there, uh, some of them are 7,000, 788, so you have 8,000, 5,000. Definitely, you'd have to be flying above there at about, probably would fly over those at 8,500 and avoid the taller peaks. But again, you end up picking up a lot of wind off the mountains and there's no point in that. If you can pick calmer, smoother air, why not? Traffic, seven o'clock, one mile, same altitude. All right, looking for that. The guys behind us. No, that's. Yeah, every now and then that happens. I'm not sure the reason. It's ghosting. That's basically a ghost image. If you can see it right there, that's us. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what causes that. Like the, you're basically seeing your own airplane. And four flights treating it as a, as a traffic alert. Here you can see some radio towers down below on that mountain peak down there. And then we're coming to uh, some flat lands with a lake up here to the left. And that is, let's see what that lake is. Lake Quinault. Lake Quinault. And that is 186 feet AG, uh, above sea level. And there you can see the Pacific Ocean. I mean, it's hard to make out, I'm sure in this... Uh, there's our timer. I'm going to reset that. 30 minutes on the right tank. And that's set. And switch it. And we're on the right tank. Okay, we're 17 miles from our next waypoint. And uh, bearing 273. 273. A little bit of chop as we 
pass into the flatlands from the mountain area. So you can see a little bit of bounce happening. And there's some uh, houses and other buildings down there along the side of that lake. Fifteen to go to our next waypoint. Then after that, the next waypoint is the airport. And showing uh, one nineteen over ground. Not too shabby. back to this airport so I can remember how to pronounce it. Quill a Ute. Quill a Ute. And the runways are 04 and 220. Showing winds variable right now. Might end up overflying that airport just to see what the winds are doing down there. The uh, pattern altitude there is uh, 1193. I'm going to switch over to that CTAP, which is 122.9. Thirteen to go to Wapto. I'm looking at some smoke on the ground, somebody may be doing a burn, and the uh, very little wind, it appears, very little wind on the ground. It's, uh, of course, this isn't necessarily what it's going to be at our destination. Pretty good ways out there, but it's indicating that it's coming from the south, but it's very, very minimal. There's a layer of clouds over the mountains there. Not a factor for us. We're going to be well clear of that. Here you can see our ammeter. So whenever a load is placed on the battery, the ammeter is going to show a charge based on that load. So what you see there as it's dancing is going to be our strobe and our beacon, both of which are, are pulsing. So they're intermittently drawing current. Whenever they place a demand on the generator, it's it's showing a charge. Whenever you see that dancing around, that's a good thing. That means your uh, generator is working properly. That's one of the checklist items on a on your run-up. Well, temp's running uh, a little lower than I'd like it to be, but there's nothing I can do about it. I have the winterization plate in place. I'd like it to run up around 180, but again, I, I can't control that. There's nothing more I can do other than install the rinthorization plate, which really just blocks air from going through the oil cooler. So then the engine's relying on the uh, ram air blowing over the top of the engine past your engine baffling. starting a gradual descent down to 3,000 and then we'll maintain 3,000 along the coastline 
Again, that's a protected area. It says uh, flight operations below 2000 AGL over the designated areas within the Olympic Coast National Marine Sanctuary violates NOAA regulations. We're going to stay well above that, but that shouldn't be a factor for us. So again, that burn down there, if you can see it with the wide angle, is showing uh, winds from the south. And I'm going to check the winds at Hoquiam. Showing 110 at 12. Now that agrees really more or less with what we're seeing there. Really coming from the southeast. East Southeast 110. Generally speaking, uh, we probably can expect. Land runway 4. That remains to be seen. We'll see. And we're uh, coming up on our waypoint here. It's 5.4. And the ocean looks nice and calm today. Five hundred looking for three thousand. Yeah, that uh, that smoke does look like it's coming from about one one zero, one two zero ish. Expecting a crosswind on landing. Three point two from our waypoint, which is the uh, Wapto intersection. Brown and uh, 107 indicated. And once we reach the coast, we're just going to follow that all the way up. Not quite now. All the, all the area there along the coast is all protected. That's why we're staying more than 2,000 AGL to comply with 30 
restriction. Technically not a restriction per se. It's a request. I'm now just generally following our course line, but not, not specifically. We're 30 miles now from the airport. Who are you? 1200 in the pattern. Let's see if we can get there, ASOS. Point zero one Celsius. Altimeter 3027. Remarks. Density altitude minus 900. Kuliut State Airport. Automated weather observation. 1920 Zulu. Wind calm. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature 08 Celsius. Dew point 01 Celsius. Altimeter 3027. Okay, Remark. There. That's good news, they're reporting winds calm. Surprises me a little bit based on what we're seeing here, but I'll take it. We'll listen to it again as we get a little closer. We're now 29 out. 18 minutes on the right tank. That's all protected area down there. Don't see any, uh, won't see any developments or homes along the coastline. There are some homes in the interior here, but not out there along the coast. Well, I do see some pockets of houses, but again, they're on the east side of the protected area. Nothing on the water, nothing on the coast. 27 to go. And at uh, 10 out, we'll give our, we'll announce our position and intentions and then uh, begin our descent down to pattern altitude of 1,200. And we're going to pay careful attention to stay clear of that protected area as we approach the airport because it's, it's pretty close. It's just to the west of the airport. Soaking in the views as we fly along the coast here. Got a little bit of chop up here. Not too bad. Fifteen minutes on the right tank. That should about get us to the airport and then we'll switch over to the left. And then uh, I'm going to plan on flying to Hoquiam and refuel there on the return. Twenty-four to go.
heat on here. It's already on, I'm just increasing it a little bit. Showing about 29 degrees Fahrenheit out there right now. Twenty-two to go. Looks like it, there is a roadway that you can access. Yeah, there's definitely a road down there. Yeah, you can drive along the coast. There's some parking areas I can see below as well. That's something that we kind of need to do one day, drive along there. Condition clear. Temperature zero eight. That uh, wind still calm. There's a lighthouse out on uh, that island that you can see out there. Probably can't see it with the wide angle view, but that little island there's a, a lighthouse to the left side there, just to the south end of the island. Showing 12 minutes on right tank. Again, we should be landing right about the time it's we're ready to switch tanks over to the left side. Should be 13 gallons remaining in the left. Fuel management is something you have to take real seriously, you know, particularly in this airplane, which got two tanks and. You have to manage switching between the tanks at intervals. I do it every 30 minutes. There have been act airplane accidents based on fuel exhaustion when someone had a perfectly full tank. They just forgot to switch over. That sure is pretty up there. Again, the wide angle view may not do it any justice, but there's multiple rock formations out in the water there. Really cool sight. You might be able to see the other airport I'm planning on flying into, uh, which is Forks. That's uh, just going to be southwest, this side and west of our destination airport. And I'm planning on going there right after I leave Kuliu. Now. It's just some uh, scattered clouds that you can see out there off to the right. That won't be a factor for us. I'm going to start a nice gentle descent down to about 2,000. And then we'll announce our position and intentions here in about four miles. some of those 
rock formations I was referring to. Right down below there off the left side. Not hearing any uh, traffic down there and I don't see anything on my ADSB for either airport, either Kuliu or Forks. Listen to ASOS again. Three zero Zulu. Wind variable at zero three. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. Temperature zero eight Celsius. Okay, so there's three knot winds and they're, they're variable, so uh, for now I'm planning landing runway 22. So I'll enter on the, on the left downwind for runway 22. And we're 12 out. Get a level off here. For now. Now we're just west of, now we're just west, uh, sorry, just east of the protected area so we can descend without concern about getting into that protected area. That could be the airport um, at about 11 o'clock. Can't tell from here, but th th there's definitely a clear area that you can see running approximately 0422. Quilly traffic, Cherokee 7428 Romeo is 10 southeast. Full stop, Quilly. Steering slightly right again to remain clear of that wildlife area. There's a better look at those rock formations I was referring to earlier. Might not have been able to see. Landing checklist, we're going to turn our fuel pump on and set mixture to full rich. We're set to the fullest tank. We'll switch tanks here. Well, I'll probably not switch at this point. Quilio traffic, Turkey 742 Romeo is now 8 southeast. Inbound for full stop, Quilio. have a, a short visual on the airport, since I'm not familiar with the airport. When you're familiar with the airport, you know the landmarks and what to look for. And when you're not, you got to wait, generally speaking, to get closer, particularly in an area that's heavily forested like this. I have at 12 o'clock what I think is the airport, but not 100%. There is a long building that resembles a hangar in an area that is cut 
that resembles an airport, but we'll know here as we get closer. A little bit of bumps coming off the bridges. This and eight is again. Eight five Zulu. Wind variable at zero three. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. Temperature zero eight Celsius. Dew point zero one Celsius. Altimeter three zero two seven. All right. No change. Clear traffic, Turkey 742 at Romeo is 5 southeast. We'll be entering the left downwind for runway 22. Full stop, Clear. Alright, we're all set up for our landing. Checklist is complete. We're clear of the wilderness protected area. And descending down to pattern altitude of 1,200, I do have the airport in sight, it's at 12 o'clock. And we'll be entering on the 45 for a left downwind runway 22. valley down there with the river running through it down to the ocean with those rock formations. Very pretty sight. Again, that is for certain the airport. Clear traffic, Turkey 7, 428 Romeo is now 2.5 to the southeast. We'll be entering on the 45 for left downwind. Runway 22, full stop, clear. Clear Clear traffic, Cherokee 748 Romeo is on left downwind for runway 22, full stop, clear. Okay, we're at pattern altitude, we are in the downwind. And rolling out right there. And we're going to begin our descent. Setting our first notch of flaps at 10 degrees. Looking for the 45. Right. Cool, traffic, Cherokee 7428 Romeo steering left base. Runway 22, full stop, cool. Air. Flaps 20 degrees set. That's a nice looking runway. Clear traffic, Cherokee 28 Romeo is turning final runway 22, full stop, clear. Runway looks like it's in great shape. And setting final notch flaps 40 degrees. Yeah, 
Aiming for the numbers. 80 degrees uh, or 80 uh, miles per hour on final. Flight crosswind C. Correcting for that. Power back. On the ground. Flaps return. Now we'll turn out right here. A pretty little airport. Great location. Leaning for taxi fuel pump off. Now the challenge is always finding where the passport stamp is located. Most likely in that blue building over. No airplanes in sight. All right, I'm going to shut it down right here. Well, after all that flying, it turns out they didn't have the passport stamp after all. They had the mailbox, but it didn't contain the stamp. But that's okay. We got to fly over the Olympic Mountains and Olympic National Park over to the Pacific Coast. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope to see you again next time. <laughs>